Chapter 3, Garden of the Hawkins Mansion. Pierce managed to get into the warehouse. The place, thought to be abandoned, revealed some surprises, signs of recent occupation as well as a partly charred painting. Interrupted in his searching by Officer Bradley, Pierce convinced him to join his investigation. The police officer is willing to drive the detective to the Hawkins Mansion. The textures aren't great, but these are good faces. Well, here we are, Hawkins Mansion. The place has been abandoned since the fire. There's only old Winchester in his hut. I assume that option is going to move us on, so let's have a chat. Spot hidden professional. The mansion burns in a fire, but it's surprisingly intact. I see no scorched trees or fire damage on the building. You're pretty damn observant, ain't you? The fire was quickly contained. Old Silas acted as soon as he could. Not soon enough to save the Hawkins. They were trapped in the drawing room. And don't go troubling Silas anymore. His guilt torments him enough as it is. Are we going to take a closer look at this mansion, or do you have other questions? I have other questions, sir. Your partner, Andrews, warned me against him. You managed to get something out of that bomb? I'll end up asking you for advice. He talks too much. He inferred that old Silas was slightly unhinged. That's not far off the mark, I suppose. But kind of unfair at the same time. You know, Silas Winchester has been working for the Hawkins family as far back as I can remember. Charles was like a son to him. The day of the fire, he lost his whole family. So he's got nowhere to go. And, as you'll see, in a way he's still watching over them. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Or do you want to go up there? The Hawkins were the only family that he knew. And he lost them all that day. You're the one who looked after the Hawkins case. Don't think I was trying to hide it. It's just that this discovery shakes my convictions. That's why you're so keen to find out who removed the painting from the mansion. Yes. If something escaped us, or if there's been a law enforcement error, then it's up to the police to make good its mistake. Anything else? No, you're hiding something. That's... I'm being judgmental, but that is not a face I can trust. You're hiding something. You won't get me to believe that it looked any better three months ago. It's a very old building, you know? Its foundations would probably date from the arrival of the first settlers. It's got nothing to do with Charles Hawkins' debts. Ha! Huh. You've already begun to nose around, it would seem. So, since you already know it, the Hawkins family couldn't afford the upkeep of this house. It remains to be seen what they did with all their money. I wager it was Charles Hawkins' travels. Let's go up there. Unless you still have questions. Drugs and alcohol, no doubt. That was me pushing this stick up to the top right so I could get a better look at the house. Anything else? I prefer to be prepared if there's going to be trouble. It's a wise attitude. But apart from old Silas and some rotten floorboards, there's nothing to worry about. Could he be a problem? Strictly speaking, he ain't dangerous. But since the tragedy, he's been a little touched. Though, he's a remarkably sturdy man, given his age. A true force of nature. A sad old man doesn't worry me. Gee, if you don't want to listen to my advice, we might as well go. Right? I completely agree with you. Night falls quickly here. 
and I want to be able to see when we arrive. I'll go with you, if only to reassure Silas. How do you know that, Pierce? Uh... Oof. I would prefer that you come with me, just so I'm keeping an eye on you. Why not? You can help. Right. Let's go. I mean, I don't suspect it's one of these games where if we refuse his offer, he can maybe turn around and stab us in the back or something, but uh, that's sort of where my brain is going. I don't want to turn my back to him. Was well, there anything new here? I did a deal with Cass. She allows me entrance to the Hawkins warehouse in exchange for a debt that she'll collect on at some time in the future. I inspected the Hawkins warehouse. The place is foul and hasn't seen any commercial activity for years. However, I did find signs of recent occupation as well as several objects linking it to the Hawkins case, including a partially charred painting. Officer Bradley confirms to me that it came from the Hawkins mansion. Garden of Hawkins Manor. Officer Bradley drove us along the cliffs to Darkwater to the Hawkins mansion. The huge house, set on the edge of a steep summit, looks onto the lighthouse. The place seems to be abandoned for some time. Bradley told me about an old caretaker still living here. He shouldn't prevent us from getting to the mansion. Now, do I want to spend some points? We need six and six to get spot hidden in investigation. We could maybe put some points into eloquence or psychology, but I'd rather wait. I'll get two more and then I'll pump them into Spot Hidden. Let's get that one up to four and then I'll probably go Investigation and try and get that up to five. Who is new here? Officer Bradley is new. This hick cop likes order and justice. He's no great sleuth, but he seems more inclined than his colleagues to discover the truth in the Hawkins case. The inhabitants of the island seems to be friendly with him. He could help me in my investigation. I don't trust him. I don't trust him at all. Gardens. The Hawkins Mansion is perched at the top of a steep cliff. The abandoned garden harbors the graves of the Hawkins family, and only the old caretaker, Silas Winchester, still roams this bleak spot. He protects it fiercely and still puts flowers on the graves of his old masters. It's a gloomy place. Alright, we might see some graves very shortly. Recently fallen. It's as if all life has abandoned the place. About to say, I assume that's been there a while, but no. Edward reckons it's been down for a while. fair way up, aren't we? Overlooking the lighthouse. Oop. What that? Small wooden whale. A figurine of a whale carved from wood. It's the sort of toy that sailors made for their children. Oh god, we got collectibles, don't we? I'm not finding them all on this playthrough. Bradley went this way. I assume he went up there. What does that say? I laid me down and slept. I awaked. But the Lord sustain me. Psalms 3 5. Not for me with that. Hilltop House built in 1693 by Reverend John Wickwood. Bradley was right. This place is much older than I imagined. 
but the architecture seems too recent. 1693, I wouldn't know. I'm not reading that again. That's the same. No, he's over there, okay. Ah, the graves. I assume we're looking at the graves and then walking up the stairs. that lamp. Simon Hawkins, the child. Poor kid. Oh, what happened here? The pots on Charles' grave have been smashed. Charles? Charles's? I'm not sure how that particular apostrophe works. The flowers Sarah Hawkins' grave are fresh. The old caretaker must be very attached to her. Silas put them there. The caretaker takes great care of these graves. But what happened here? Charles Hawkins' grave. Who could have done this? I told you. Silas Winchester is still watching over the Hawkins family. I must say, it's pretty gloomy. So, detective, does this place inspire any thoughts? I mean, the smashed pots are one thing. I imagine we should be able to comment on those, but we can't. Why were they buried here? I was given to believe that it was Charles Hawkins' wish. Strange idea. I imagine Webster wasn't too pleased. Mrs. Hawkins' father? It's said that he's devastated. Let's go to the mansion. Please give me a minute. I didn't expect to set foot back here after the burial. What kind of deranged individual would defile this sanctuary? And steal a burnt painting? I don't see Silas doing such a thing. Let alone allowing it. Even that broad baker is above that. Lord, have pity on this poor family. I don't think he's going to move. Which means my cunning plan of accompanying him and making sure he's up to no good has officially gone out the window. He's not coming. Okay, we have stairs to our left. A door to our front, or something like that. A gate to the front. Path back down here, blocked by the tree. There's nothing cunningly hidden there. This place is boarded up. I'll have to find another entrance. this place. Look at all these dead trees here. I mean, I know I was walking amongst them earlier, but just seeing it like that is very, very stark. There's no life here. There's some leaves over there growing against uh, the walls like ivy or whatever, but the trees are bare. This entrance is still in use. Whoa! 
Whoa! You were trying to force the door, you nosy prick! Easy, sir, all right? Put down the axe. You know what we do with rubble like you? We gut them! Dump them into the ocean! Whoa! Uh, uh, uh. You're Mr. Winchester. Lower that axe. Let's talk calmly. I'll show you how we have it out on dark water. Jesus, dude. Uh, he doesn't know who Stephen Webster is, I think. Let's go do not find this place. You haven't forgiven yourself. You stay here to honor the memory of the deceased. That's true. I want no more violence. No more tragedy. It's painful to be the last one left. You don't know how right you are. Understood. I'm listening. That was easy. The police report describes a domestic accident. But Stephen Webster has several reasons to believe that this may not be the case. Webster is as stubborn as an old mule. And I did tell him that we should let the dead rest in peace. He wants to restore the reputation of his daughter. I just need to see where the fire started. No, I can't let you in. The mansion isn't safe. That's why you barricaded the entrance. That's right. And this door? It's locked, and I make sure it stays that way. Where's this police officer when we need him? Uh... Let's go with that one first. You still put flowers on her grave. You cherish her memory. Mrs. Hawkins was an exceptional person. She cared for everyone around her. Let me shed a light on what happened to her. Give me that key. Hmm. I'm probably making a big mistake, but it won't be the first. Here, take the key and do what you have to do. Go on, then, just to get rid of you. Let's see what more I can learn from this mansion. I don't suppose we could... Yeah, that was a very, very rushed conversation. Especially at the start there, because of the whole axe and stuff, but... You'd think Edward would at least introduce himself, say, Hey, I'm a detective. I came in with this police officer here. Can we all just be friendly, please? And maybe we'll work our way inside. Maybe I can help you. Maybe you yes. can give me that key. Shall we, Anna? I'm talking, not right now. But nah, it's just, let's choose this option and he'll give us the key and we'll get a trophy for our efforts. What now? Do you have a moment? What now? Can I at least introduce Nothing. myself? Sorry. No. Stop wasting my time. Alright, fine. Bradley will go inside shortly. I just want to see if there's anything around this side of the mansion. Some sort of greenhouse or shed down there. This gate is locked. This must be where Silas lives. I'll check his profile in a sec. I know a thing or two about solitude myself. A bottle of whiskey. Rather Spartan. The caretaker has simple tastes. The poor wretch seems to spend the best part of his time isolated. living in his little shack here below the mansion. But he keeps an entrance open for whatever reason. He barricaded the front, but he keeps the side entrance open. Hello? Hello? 
what may I ask did that accomplish? Okay, my guess is that if he doesn't give us a key, he retires to this shack and he puts the key here. That is, I guess, what happens if we fail that check or if we fail to get the key out of him. Because I'm guessing this door is locked, right? Dude's not behind me carrying an axe? No, good. Where are you, Silas? Caretaker of the Hawkins property, 64 years old. And still pretty good with an axe. The old caretaker of the Hawkins family, Silas Winchester still watches over the family graveyard and the burned out mansion. Devoted to Charles Hawkins, whom he all but raised, he also has great respect for the memory of Sarah Hawkins and their child, Simon. His long months of solitude in the abandoned property have made him very distrustful. Silas still puts flowers on the graves of Charles, Sarah and Simon. Right, the way that's described, I presume he was not the person who smashed the pots at Charles' grave. Shall we enter? Now that you've finished your fun and games with Silas, we can perhaps inspect the mansion. You're right. Let's go. He started it. Let's take a look inside. I'm with you. Hawkins Mansion. Pierce and Officer Bradley explored the gardens of the Hawkins Mansion. The family lies in the graveyard of the property, guarded by Silas Winchester. The old caretaker, still faithful to his employees, keeps watch on the place, armed with his axe. Pierce and Bradley manage to calm him down and, finally, get hold of the keys to the Hawkins mansion. They enter the building, looking for the scene of the fire. Follow me. I know the place. Who left this light on? You know the place, but I really want to explore. Consult's diary, really? Oh yeah. Charles, Sarah and Simon Hawkins have been laid to rest in the garden of the mansion. A strange decision, especially as they are the only members of the Hawkins family to be buried there. A lit hurricane lamp has been left close by. Someone came this way just before us. Old Silas Winchester haunts the property of his old masters, ready to use his axe on the first person he meets. He'd have chased me off, or cut me to pieces, if I hadn't been able to calm him down. Nevertheless, I did manage to convince him to give me the keys to the tradesman's entrance. Tradesman's entrance, okay. Hawkins Manor. In the entrance hall of the mansion, a lighted lamp seems to be waiting for us, and the old caretaker who thinks he can stop people from entering. I must find a place where the Hawkins family died. En route? I'll pick up as much information as I can on their life. How many points? Five? Five. Figurine, yep, we saw that. Inventory. I've got hold of the key that opens the door to the tradesman's entrance of the Hawkins Mansion. I hope that it was worth the risk. Telling me all this stuff is here and it hasn't been touched in the last supper of the Hawkins. Months? What does this tell me? And we want to reconstruct this, okay. Before I do it, let me just see how many interact points I've got. We've got the painting behind us. Which I think I'll look at right now. Sarah Hawkins painted herself with her son, Simon, ready to go somewhere, but without Charles. Sarah Hawkins painted herself with her son, Simon, ready to go somewhere, but without Charles. That is an interesting observation. 
why would the father not be in the painting? Alright. Well, the place looks a little bit cleaner at least, but we still got chairs knocked down here, something smashed on the floor. The doors are closed. We can do a medicine check on the food, which is kind of disturbing. Nothing at the fireplace. Is it just a medicine check on the food? Nothing at the windows. Okay. Let's do a medicine check on the food. What kind of meat is this? Doesn't recognize it. Uh, I can't exit reconstruction. Never mind. I can check out the place on the left as well. This place is for the head of the family, Charles Hawkins. I see. So the chair was down there before. But now he's sort of stood up in a rage here. And the chair has gone flying backwards. But there was an argument here, I guess. The boy was probably here. Smashed his plate on the floor. And this is where Sarah was sitting. Sarah Hawkins didn't eat. Was it because of the meat or something else? Something happened at this table. An argument? I don't think we're getting anything else out of this. Hey, Pierce. Daydreaming again? Working, officer. This dinner table tells us a lot about the Hawkins family life. Well, we don't have all day. The scene of the fire is next door. Ah, uh, where is it? The Last Supper. Since the fire in the Hawkins mansion, the dining room has remained intact. The settings allow the places occupied by the family members to be determined. Visibly, its equipment was respected, even in private. Charles Hawkins sat at the head of the table, with wife and son on either side. The knocked over chair could be due to something that happened after the fire, or it could confirm the theory of a domestic argument. Clearly, the roast was untouched in certain plates. The meat, mysteriously preserved since then, seems to have been the subject of the dispute between the Hawkins couple. Okay, so according to this, it was the meat. Is this human meat? I hope not. Wait, look at that. Is that like an eye on the side of that thing? Didn't quite hear there, Bradley. Uh, where the lighter is placed, the flame, is that an eye? Like a squid or something? Oh my god, that's disgusting. Whatever it is, I don't like it. Can't read that. Okay, that's the scene of the fire. Charles and Sarah. They seem happy. Charles is already looking off into the future. His marriage just to stop along the way. Was Charles Hawkins some kind of explorer? I think that's a Photoshop. Charles Hawkins poses like an explorer in front of exotic ruins. It is common knowledge that he wasted away his fortune on expensive trips. What was he looking for? Went to Egypt. Too much rubble. I'll find an easier way. If you seriously can't climb over that, you shouldn't be a private investigator. Just saying. Alright. 
Let's see if I can find something the cops missed. Before we do that, I have a point to spend. The dining room has remained untouched since the night of the fire. It taught me something about relations in the Charles Sarah Hawkins couple. It seems that an argument broke out on the night of the drama. In the partly burned out drawing room, the fire has, perhaps, left a few clues that escaped the local cops. Alright. Let's pump up Spot's Hidden. Uh, uh, no. Let's validate that. Alright, so we have Spot Hidden and Investigation at Expert Level. Just gonna tag that one off. We'll check that out shortly. Uh, why did you do that? I don't know why I put the lights or why just then. Alright, nothing too unusual around here. Well, let's reconstruct. Okay, that's an invisible wall. I can't go out here. This is where I came in. This room was already pretty effed up, or we haven't gone entirely before the fire. Oh, look at that. That's sus. There was a painting here. It's gone now. Also something on the floor. Uh, a body? Yeah, that's totally someone's legs and lower torso. Clock. Uh, a green glowing thing here, but I don't know if I can actually inspect that or not. Up oh, there it is. It's showing up on the bottom left as well. Did Sarah Hawkins lose one of her shoes? How? Probably threw it out the window in the drunken stupor. Did it stop at the time of the fire? If so, 10... 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. The child's corpse left a trace. Where are the others? Was Charles Hawkins a heavy drinker? Ask we all. If the painting I found on the docks really came from here, how come it didn't burn? That's a very good question. Alright, I can't exit reconstruction just yet. It is showing to tick down the bottom left, so I assume I found all the... I don't know whether to call them hidden clues entirely, or whether we're supposed to find them, but I found all those clues. Scratch marks? Did someone escape the fire? I don't think that will be Silas, just quietly. I don't get that vibe from him. What have we down here? A lamp. They had a fight. Why? Maybe something that happened after dinner. But I assume that's what triggered the fire. Alright, so what can we assume? That he got drunk, he hit Sarah, Sarah fell down there, maybe sensed the lamp flying and maybe that's what triggered the fire. But if that was the case, Charles maybe would have survived by running for his life. Hmm. Blood. This lamp was thrown. This was no accident. This was a fight.
Someone fell here. A desperate attempt to flee. Alcohol and the boy. So, detective, what do you make of it? Uh, that's rude. Don't know what to make of that just yet. I'll say the fire wasn't just an accident because there was a fight. I firmly believe this fire was more than just an accident. <laughs> What's your theory? I think the Hawkins couple got into a fight. You sure of that? There's only one way to be sure. I just ask that you don't disturb anything. If Chief West found out about what we're doing, I'd be in serious trouble. I'm not entirely sure why exploring the rest of the manor is going to help us be sure of what happened, but I'll play along for now. Even Officer Bradley was forced to admit it. This room tells a far different story to the police report. The presence of blood on the shards of glass from the lamp, the mark of a hand left on the door by someone fleeing the fire, we are in a crime scene. I must continue searching the mansion to look for information on the life and death of the Hawkins family. Alright, sounds fair enough. Hartley burned shoe. The glass of this heavy clock is broken and the hands show 10 o'clock. It could give the time of the fire or have nothing to do with it. According to the police report, this lamp is the cause of the accidental fire that destroyed the mansion. However, blood stains on the debris tell a very different story. They missed that? Really? Scene of the fire. Contradicting the police report, the Hawkins drawing room tells a totally different version of the fire that claimed the whole family, beginning with the presence of a handprint that throws up the possibility of a survivor. The bodies of Charles and Sarah Hawkins left no mark on the floor, nor, to that matter, in the drawing room, contrary to that of the child, still visible close to the fireplace. The same goes for the glass shards on the floor. A close inspection reveals the presence of blood on several of them. On the wall, the very clear mark left by the painting found in the Hawkins warehouse confirms that the Hawkins case could be much more than a domestic accident. Yeah, because... How, how does this work? Why would there be a... I'll call it a blank space on the wall there. There was a fire that scorched the wall, but the painting was untouched and then the painting was removed. I don't know, I don't deal with crime scenes in the real life. I'm not sure. We're just looking for some more clues about their life. Uh... This door is locked. Lovely effect. I'm trying to see where we are, but right now I can't orient myself. Woohoo! This collection of medical knowledge and health practices in the 18th century actually only covers the so-called civilized countries. It does not deal with the influence of holistic medicines or medicines from continents considered inferior. Charming. Is that another 2%? We could be here a while. These bandages are covered in dried blood. The same bandages that I saw in the warehouse on the docks. And given the blood stains, I'd also say that it's the same person. That means it's either Silas or someone else is getting in here without Silas's knowledge. Or there's something that he's hiding. One and three are basically the same thing. 
uh, we have a green question mark there. So I assume there's something lurking inside this room, like this little thing here. A crowbar found in the Hawkins Manor. It probably belongs to the caretaker, Silas. A crowbar could prove useful. All right, we have a tick on the bottom left there. <sighs> this door is blocked from the outside. Uh, is this the front door? I see a little balcony outside, so I want to say yes, but I can't be certain. The lyrics of the drunken sailor, the sea shanty. I wonder if that's what they were singing down at the bar. Where did Bradley go? We have a path over there, and we've got upstairs as well. An original edition of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, dated 1818. Just in case that's progression, I'll explore this area first. Ornos. How was that sound effect? Charles's portrait is there. We have a family portrait just on the right. Hmm. Moby Dick, Melville's classic. The epic battle between man and whale. A copy of the novel Moby Dick by Herman Melville. A classic, especially for a family of ship owners. Mandatory reading for any whaler, I guess. Absolutely. What are we looking at here? My immediate thought is maybe this is pointing to something inside this room, but I don't recognize it. Just a still life of some sort. Another one? The human body, a comparative analysis. A precise and very detailed treatise on the particularities of the human body compared to the animal world. The simplicity of its writing and the vulgarization of its vocabulary make it accessible to profane. Two more percents. Oh boy. Are there really like 40 of these in game? Surely not. Bradley, have you found anything here? What do you know about Charles Hawkins' activities? Well, not much to be honest. We all assumed the Hawkins lived on Charles's inheritance. If you're right, we should be able to find clues among the Hawkins' personal effects. Did you hear that? I heard you, but not much else. What do you know about Charles Hawkins' activities? Well, not much, to be honest. We all assumed the Hawkins lived on Charles' inheritance. Twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Another story about the mysteries of the deep. A rare edition of Jules Verne's novel. All right. Well, there's nothing creepy about that at all, right? One of Sarah Hawkins' paintings. Her style sure is recognizable. One of Sarah Hawkins' paintings. Her style sure is recognizable. Are we not going to comment on, you know, this thing underneath it? Christ, Edward. A book on hunting whales. 
the island's staple diet last century. Dark water history. This place was settled back in 1692 by two families that seceded from the New England colonies. Immediate thought on that is the bootleggers and the sailors, perhaps. Greek mythology. Hecate, goddess of the dead, daughter of Tartarus, and mother of Scylla. Pronounced Scylla. I apologize for getting it wrong on the early streams. Scylla, Greek mythology. And we can only read that because we switched that on. That must be important, surely. Although I don't see why just yet. Alright. I don't think there's anything else to discover in here, so let's go this way. What could Sarah have done to make this person threaten to call the police? Dear sir, as you know, I have always held you and your family in high respect. Unfortunately, I can no longer continue to close my eyes on the behaviour of your wife. Last week, she, again terrified my clientele. I know that she means no harm, but you should place her in the care of Dr. Fuller. He alone seems able to make her come to her senses. If these disturbances were to recur, believe me that, although it would feel like torture, I would be obliged to involve the police. Respectfully yours, Anton Wellard. I don't suppose you could eludicate me as to the nature of what she did, her behaviour? Sorry, just marking a few things off here. Okay, we can't go down there. Ah, but I've already been down there. I recognise that. Oh, can I drop? No, that's an invisible wall. through there we can not Locked. go through here another scratch all right well that freaked me out just a little bit we do have a uh, question mark or oh, it was showing there briefly a moment ago it's not showing up now so I do wonder if I failed a spot hidden the boys check. room I really don't understand why Edward put the Elisa away. He did the same thing in the dining room, or the scene of the fire, I should say. Alright. I'm only creeping around this kid's room because it's part of the investigation. I'm not weird, I swear. child's fort. From what threat was Simon protecting his world? Hiding in the corner there. Building a little village out of books. That's really cool. Tom Sawyer. Mark Twain. Sarah must have read it to him before bed. Not familiar with that book, but I suspect it's a torture of its own kind. Sleeping pills. Sleeping pills? Strong for an 11-year-old boy. What was wrong with this family?
What nightmarish vision could have inspired them? Simon's troubles went beyond family problems. That kid saw something. Something terrified him. And yet his mother is the one who's comforting him, but the mother is the one who's also seeing visions according to the father. Her father, not his father. Whatever. In the little boy's room, an abandoned book on the bed and toys scattered on the ground talk about the everyday life of a normal family. But the disturbing drawings and the sleeping pills raise suspicions that even Simon Hawkins may have been suffering from mental illness. Was the boy able to see things like her mother pretended to be? I'm not sure what to make of that last sentence though. Like her mother pretended to be? I thought she was seeing things full stop. Curious. Yeah, we've seen all those. Yeah, I wonder if I've missed a spot hidden check because I definitely saw the green circle when I came into this room and I don't see it now. No, there it is. It's somewhere around here. Ah. Office key. The key that opens the door to Sarah Hawkins' office was concealed. Yeah, it doesn't look that concealed to me. It's just lying behind those books. Oh, God. Uh, officer, you should come here and see this. You first. You just go in there, investigate that, and I'll wait out here. How about that? How does that sound? Jesus, fuck. I mean, the most disturbing thing about this isn't what we're seeing here. It's that it is a hop, skip, and jump from the child's bedroom. Fucking hell. I mean, she was an artist. You would expect things like canvases and paints and whatever have you, but no, not this. Not fucking this. Plus, I'm terrified of going in any direction at the moment because I'm scared that I might actually progress things. Like, what about this door here? That door's locked? No? What will her room reveal about her? Alright, let's go in her room later because this door, I guess, here is locked. We can lockpick it. Ah, okay, so if we don't find the key, that is a way that we can get inside the office. If we pass this check, of course. Which we did. Perfect. Alright, let's explore this room first. I mean, the canvases, yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. This... Uh, not so fine. Sarah Hawkins' agent was getting worried. Seems she wasn't giving any signs of life. My very dear Sarah, ever since you left to bury yourself away on that lost island, your art has been attracting increasing numbers of collectors. I beg you to send me some new paintings. The last ones, so somber and strange, moving as no other paintings have been, are selling at a premium price. The lack of full stop there is triggering me. Your percentage of these most recent sales is attached. Do not forget your friend, who was the first to recognize your genius and display it to the world. Affectionately yours, Maximilian L. This ledger lists all of the paintings Sarah Hawkins sold. I'm not reading this out loud. 
So what are we looking at? It's January to April on the left-hand page from 170, whatever the currency is. What would it be in America? I want to say US dollars, but I don't know if the currency was different in the 1920s. 170 through to 350 at an exhibition. And then on the right, there were more exhibitions. One sold for over $1,100. Painting for AD, 500 returned. That's curious. And then the last one is the Shambler for FS gift. One moment, I just want to take a look at my clues. Dr. Fuller. Okay, so it's saying painting for Dr. F. There's two of them down there. Oh, there's another painting that was sold for 1680 Damn. Who is FS? I don't see an FS amongst my names there. Also, AD. Do I have an AD? I don't think so. No, I don't. It seems the last one was given for free to a Francis Sanders. I wonder why. Okay, thank you for telling me that game. That makes things very, very easy for me. Francis Sanders. I don't know that name. Despite what happened, they seem to have loved each other. Charles Hawkins scribbled a kind word to his wife. Fates brought us together, and forever it will bind us. No, I don't see that as kind. I do not see that as kind. That is not a sweet nothing. That is absolutely not a sweet nothing. Alright, uh, can I investigate this thing, please? It's an occult check, so I'll definitely fail, but... Let's just take a look anyway. Was Sarah Hawkins interested in the occult? What was she trying to achieve? Got to look at it. If the creature is not yet anchored in our dimension, an expulsion ritual might work. As long as the person performing it makes sure that he integrates the Elder Sign among the glyphs that make up the ceremonial circle. Be careful though, because the works that describe the creation of such circles are not all of proven reliability. Extract taken from the Malleus Bisterium by Abigail G. Mm, she was up to no good. No good at all. Alright, let me just check this door up here. Bradley? Is that you? Alright, let me check out this room first. I've got a horrible feeling something's going to happen when I go through those double doors based on that particular conversation there. Uh, anything in here? Barbiturates. Sarah Hawkins must have been extremely agitated resorting to such a treatment. They act as a depressant of the nervous system, but once you begin, you can never live without them. Of that, I know something. A barbiturate prescription from a certain Dr. Fuller. Uh, what date is that? 21st of July, 1924. 75 milligram of, I can't read that, sodium to be taken every four to six hours as required. If attacks become too violent, add 25 milligrams of something up to three times a day. Do not consume alcohol or any other medication during the period of treatments. And yet we saw some alcohol in the scene of the fire. That's a massive dose. Was Sarah violent? I mean, judging by the other letter we read, I'd say yes, she was violent. Prone to outbursts. Whether they were all of her own making, I'm not sure. I uh, don't really know why Edward's doing this, whether it's just becoming too hot to hold after a while. But yeah, every now and then he just puts it away. 
Hmm. Scary. That sound effect. Sarah Hawkins' sketches look more like a gallery of horrors than anatomical studies. Do they represent what haunts her nights? Oh, we have progression. All 5%. Jesus. Just looking at the paintings on the walls, I don't see anything unusual there, although... No, I thought that might have been the eye symbol down the bottom right there, but it's not. There's no weird stuff in this room. It's all in the office next door. <laughs> 